Tilla, what's poppin'? It is. We are on Twitch. We are not live. Uh, but you can come maybe to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. It is Documentary Monday. Yes, sir. Got my uh, little snack. Britain's Most Dangerous Prison for Documentary. This is the... Hold on. Something oh, right? Some beautiful wise quotations Whatever. for you to enjoy. Let's get into it. That's cool. Give me ten of them. Two. Three. These two men were the ringleaders behind Britain's most notorious and violent prison riot. Okay. 25 years ago, nearly 2,000 inmates broke out of their cells and took over Strangeways Prison in Manchester. The world's media caught every moment of the rooftop siege. But what made Strangeways remarkable was that cameras had already captured the brutal conditions that existed inside the prison. Oh, so you knew that what they was doing this for. You knew why they was rebelling, okay. A stark warning of what was to come. I'll tell you something, this place will go off. And when this place does go off, the roof will go, man. Damn. When this hidden world finally erupted, men died and hundreds were injured. Oh, shit. Now, for the first time, the riot leaders, the inmates who followed them, and the prison officers who fought them, take us inside Britain's toughest prison riot. Okay. It's like, niggas is in jail, I get it. But they're still human beings. I know, I know, I know. They did some bad stuff to get here. But you gotta have certain standards and certain level of cleanliness and certain things have to be had there. Like, yeah. So I chose the longest one to do first because my baby is in the room sleep. But you know, the grind don't stop. So this will be a two part series. So if she wakes up anytime before 30 minutes, I'm going to continue part two straight through. Uh, part one is until she wakes up or until 30 minutes. Strangeways Prison, Manchester. And so into a barred and unnatural world of 900 male prisoners and 140 male officers. A world without money or women or liberty. You've got to understand that the people who were training you probably joined the prison service just after the Second World War. And they were trained by people who joined just after the First World War. Well, and so they were probably okay. trained by people who joined after the Boer War. Mm. So the standards that applied were the standards Military that applied type shit. 50, 60, 70, perhaps 100 years ago. What were those standards, Dave? Discipline. Simple as that. My job was the same as any other officer, especially young ones. Keep your mouth shut, listen, watch, and learn. Prison officers had to be there seven o'clock in the morning, not one minute past seven. If you didn't appear, properly dressed, then you could be disciplined. It had so even officers have been disciplined. a reputation, along with Wandsworth, as sort of being the last bastions of discipline in the service. Strangeways was Britain's largest jail. A dark so star jail. hidden behind vast Victorian walls in the heart of Manchester. Jesus. The prison was designed on a Victorian design. Okay. If you were to look right down from the top of the rotunda, you would see the prison centre, 
which will be the hub of the wheel. Off that centre were the five wings, A, B, C, D and E. And those wings would house all the inmates on four different landings, A1, A2, A3, A4. Making sense so far? They're exactly the same with B wing, C wing, D wing and E wing. Okay. So you can stand on the centre of the prison and look down every wing and see everything that's going on. Eh, kind of. When you get up these stairs, I want you to stand around the iron grid and wait there. This is life in a local prison, as it actually happens today. In 1980, the hidden world of strange ways was revealed when a documentary team filmed life inside the prison. So this is in the 80s, this the documentary, OK. I want you to go down on the way to and stand outside your cell. It was a mammoth of a place. Imagine going to jail with a haircut like this for the first time in this big-ass jail like this. This is intimidating as fuck. I ain't gonna lie to you. Look it at this. kind of Dickensian. For a young boy, you know, 15 and a half, 16 years of age, it, it was quite gruesome. Black slip on shoes, blue jacket, pinstripe. I was 20, you know, a small young. They getting all that? They get the click clackers and a pinstripe jacket? That's my dinner retire at the fanciest restaurant. What the fuck? Young man. When you're a young offender, or that's them taking them. You stuff. go to the intake. reception stuff. Okay, that's intake. Okay. You are stripped, and you know, and the, you know, the, the, you know, they ask you to bend over and that, and the exposure. Put your shirt right up for me. What's this scar for here? Stopped. Hey? Stopped. Mm. Everything in there was dark. It's frightening as well. That's a former prisoner, okay. That's one of the leaders that arrived. It was known to the locals as the Big House. We are the only hotel in Manchester that is always a 100% full. I hope, I hope it's off to where we go. I was very proud to work at Strange Ways. There's no tighter bunch than those people. What, they had a bar in there, motherfucker, or something? This is a bar inside the prison? Or am I tweaking, or is this happy hour after at a bar at a bar that's close? No, this is inside. Gotta be. You work in an institution, and I found that to be very satisfying. But Strange Ways was struggling to cope with the rising tide of prisoners coming through the gates. Built for 900 men, Strange Ways now housed one and a half thousand. Prisoners, I'm talking the prisoners. Pressures, intentions of him. Prisoners, that's 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 the first. That's the first reason why I should be going left in prisoners. Overcrowding are increased when two or three men share this living space. A cell devised in the Victorian age for one man. And we had a previous governor who uh, once labelled it as um, a human warehouse. Wow. He's right, really. It was a human warehouse. Three inmates had to share the toilet facilities in a cell, which was a chamber pot. Like a plastic bucket, right? with a lid on, if you're lucky, where you shit and you piss, and it's in your shell with you. It wasn't very nice if, you, if you're wanting to defecate and your cellmate's, you know, in the cell and he has to experience the, sp the stench of that. <laughs> Sorry. Seems absolutely barbaric, but in those... That's all prisons, but, like, the bucket thing is tough. That's, that, a bucket, an actual bucket with a lid, that's tough. Days, that, was, that was normal. And you just accepted it and got on with it as a way of life. Prisoners were allowed just one hour's exercise a day. 
For the other 23 hours, the men were routinely locked back in their cells. Tension, anger, frustration. The added problem of overcrowding rising to alarming proportions has also increased the threat of insurrection. This is a Victorian prison. In 1990, that's still acting and treating people like it's Victorian times. This place should be closed down because this nick is run by the screws. But I'll tell you something, this place will go off. And when this place does go off, the roof will go. Hiding on the wall. Into this powder keg stepped an idealistic young governor, Brendan O'Friel. He had a reputation governor, is this like the warden? as a modernizer. When they say governor, they mean like the warden of the prisoner, right? The big issues were Prison. we had far too many prisoners and not enough cells, okay. things for them to do. It makes people very depressed, very morose. It makes them very angry. Brendan O'Friel was a remarkable man, a man of deep convictions, of real spiritual experience, and a man who cared. The new governor was quick to spot the simmering tension that existed between prison officers and prisoners. You know, I was a bit of a bastard, to say the least sometimes. You know, I was volatile, I'd explode. Do you know what I mean? And I was hard work for them and sometimes, which sometimes you, you didn't even have to do nothing. You say like there's 200 officers in strange ways. I'd say there's only 20 of them that were really bad. The others were all right, they were decent staff. They just went about the daily jobs, they didn't bother no one. But out of the sweater, the bad apples. The, the bad apples make make the prison. So just like any system, the bad apples stand out way more. Because if everybody's doing cool, it's doing cool, and it's going cool, they're expecting you as a bad apple. You've made a name for yourself because everybody else is cool, you know what I'm saying? You walking in there, you the bad apple, like damn, here come this mild effort. You know what I'm saying? Like dang. There's already animosity towards you every day. They were a little firm, and they used to come round beating people up. There was no abuse. Simple as that. No physical. And no verbal. It's... He yeah, said... No. And no... Simple as that. Pull up. There was no abuse. Oh, uh, he was one of the bad apples. Simple. He was one of the bad guys, man. He's lying. Simple as that. No physical. You're lying. And no verbal. It's hear no evil, see no evil. He was weave? Seek no evil, but you know, he some was prison officers have the courage to say that. I know it. Some won't. Prisoners on occasions can be extremely difficult, uh, um, extremely objectionable, and staff are rightly, on occasions, very cautious about prisoners and sometimes get very cross about them. But O'Friel also discovered a culture amongst some prison officers that had no place in his prison. <laughs> we had a club, a prison officers club, immediately outside the gate, which regrettably served uh, alcohol at lunchtime. So while on the job, they getting lit, and then going in, already with that shitty-ass attitude, now I'm drunk. It meant that in the afternoon, there was the danger that some staff would return to duty having been drinking. And this would have two effects. One is it would probably affect their judgment a bit, and certainly it would aggravate prisoners. Well, yeah, they used to use my fists at times, but when that wasn't working, because used to have their batons and stuff like that. We used to have a piss pot, so we used to throw that over them, full of piss and shit. <laughs> and the new governor noticed that there were some prison officers who were openly racist. Some of the oh, staff yeah. were wearing on their ties um, a little symbol um, that was regarded as racist. And some of them used to have badges with, like, uh, you know, you know, the gollywog off the jam jar on it and things like that, and you know, it was just like, what is this place? I what? instructed that all those symbols be removed. You can remove the symbol, but the name's still racist. You should have fired the, uh... 
that sort of behavior would not be tolerated. He looks familiar. All of the prison officers ah. were male. A situation Elfriel soon remedied. I remember my first day at Strange Ways and I was allocated B-Wing and I was just stunned at how many prisoners there were just unlocked at the same time, marching down so disciplined. It's illogical to have female staff looking after male prisoners. We, we certainly had... Buddy definitely was a bad apple. ...bumps and bangs as we introduced um, uh, change like that. You always do. But overall, the, the, the effect was quite remarkable. If there was tension on the wing, if prisoners were going to fight, sometimes the females just being there calmed it down. Unlike previous governors, Brendan O'Freeland made it bitch, his business yeah. to get to know prisoners. Crazy thing, testosterone. He was a little bit different. He'd openly chat to a prisoner. If a prisoner came to him and said something, he'd, he would actually chat to them on the sensor, which, as officers, we found a little bit strange, I must admit. I knew about Brendan O'Freel. I'd had a conversation with him on the sensor of Sunder one day. Just by chance, he was passing, and I engaged him in conversation. I was trying to persuade Paul that there were um, opportunities for him to go to work, because he was a sentence prisoner, and um, I was trying to get all the sentence prisoners in the main prison doing some sort of activity for at least half a day. OK. Paul Taylor was serving three years for checkbook fraud and handling stolen goods. I grew up in Birkenhead until the age of... So he was like of a scammer. And, a half, and my mother had a breakdown, and from the age of seven and a half, I was in care homes. He'd been in and out of prison since the age of 15. Now nearing the end of his sentence, Brendan O'Friel was keen to prepare Taylor for life outside. It's where I come to contemplate life. The rocks in Birkenhead Park. I like schooling, you know, um, the power of the written word. This is a rock I imagined when I'm sat on those rocks over there. That this is a lecture hall and that this is Aristotle or Plato or Socrates giving me a lecture. Welcome okay. to Strange Ways, first of all. The governor of Strange Ways today admitted he'd initially been daunted by the arrival of prison inspectors, but his fears were largely unfounded. O'Friel's approach began to pay off. Strange Ways got a good report from the chief inspector of prisons. When it came out, I was extremely okay. pleased because he did the two things I wanted. First of all, did? he praised what we had done so far, but he also pointed out we had a very long way to go and we were in serious need of major capital investment. Yeah. Despite O'Friel's progress, Strange Ways was still taking in more and more prisoners. In February 1990, Alan Lord, a convicted murderer with a fearsome reputation in the prison system, arrived at the jail. Alan Lord was a life sentence prisoner, and as a life sentence prisoner, you always uh, treated these people warily, um, because uh, they were in for a capital offence. They did not care. Lord had been moved from prison to prison. I knew him because of his... History, a violent prisoner, bodybuilder, potential to be very dangerous. Lord knew strange ways. He'd begun his life sentence there, and he bought. What kind of prison is name is Strange Ways? That's like, did they change that name by now? Because that's due to have some issues, obviously. Yeah, I'm in prison, Strange Ways. What the hell? A grudge. I was 19 years of age. Just as I was entering the cell, one of the screws punched me in the back of the head and said, you murdering black bastard. I decided wow. that once that door was opened again, I was coming out fighting. I took him on myself already to in literally, okay. no matter what cell I was in, smash hell out of that cell. I never had own comforts, never had a bed frame, I never had a mattress. I lived in an empty cell, slept on the floor. 
Dang. Why did you do that? Because it's me taking control. Inevitably, Lord was sent to D-Wing's segregation unit for difficult prisoners. Back in the main prison, Brendan O'Friel pushed on with repairs to the aging jail. Is that a bird? It was like a, a menagerie in the evenings and nights because we'd got birds that had got through, uh, broken glass, uh, etc. And uh, it was becoming an issue. That can drive you crazy. Birds in the middle of the night and you can't go nowhere, escape, you can't drown them out with no type of music, can't put nothing in your ears. <coughs> 20 tons of scaffolding was erected through the jail's central rotunda, creating a vast climbing frame that rose up to the fourth floor. Oh, wow. It's difficult to see into the wing, even though there was electric light, it still made it dark. And I felt that those, this, this darkness was reaching everyone within the prison. That month, even more prisoners arrived. Strangeways was bursting at the seams. We had 900 or so places. We had 1,600, 1,700 prisoners. That was the reality, day in, day out. That is Two, three pretty people appalling. In the cell, or tiny cells. For Paul Taylor, prison conditions were now intolerable. I'd written to the Home Office an 18-page representation. The prison service was negligent in addressing its duty of care to address prisoners' problems and didn't feel I was getting anywhere. Taylor's frustration boiled over. Mm -hmm. feel like you don't he began get to talk to, openly yeah. of revolt. Oh, yeah. I wanted personally to demonstrate to prison officers and prison governor in particular that prisoners had reached the end of their tether. Taylor was... You gotta know, man. You gotta treat them niggas with some type of respect because it's like a... It's 1,700 of them. There's not 1,700 prison guards. It's simple. The numbers are just against you every day, every Sent shift. Sent to the segregation unit to cool off. It's gonna make me more angry. It was there that he unit. first met Alan Lord during their one hour of daily exercise. We were able to walk side by side. We just magnated towards each other, right? We're on the same wavelength. We said that people have to stand up for the rights because this cannot be the situation in this century. Together, they hatched a plan. And I said that a 24 hour protest in the chapel would be great if everybody stuck together. The chapel was the one place in strange ways where large numbers of prisoners were allowed to gather. Oh, wow. I was going to make a statement on the stage and uh, if prison officers came in in force to try and break it up, we might retaliate. It was very quiet. It was eerie that night. Quiet before the storm. Yeah, when I was doing my rounds, the occupants were wide awake, just laid on top of the bed, which was unusual, you know, but they're usually asleep. It's like Christmas night, Through the and windows, Christmas Eve. I'm waiting. Prisoners were talking about what they were going to do the next day, and we was going to go to the chapel and have a peaceful protest. Any type of rebellion in the, any type of rebellion in this situation is a threat to the guards. Uh, but I'm guaranteed they handled it very wrong. Uh, Sunday first, April. What well, they thought it was April Fool's joke, huh? Okay. On the Sunday, I was late for the first time in my life. When I arrived, the senior officer said to me, "We're short-staffed. Uh, I'm putting you in the chapel as extra staff." So I thought, well, at least I've not got a rollicking. They challenged for church. Why did you? So yeah. I've done my bit of cleaning what we have to do. And um, 
line got in line for church. By 10 o'clock that morning, more than 300 prisoners had filed into the chapel. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. 300 prisoners at any place at any time is a load. That's a lot. That's a lot of trust. <sighs> when the prisoners came in, there was a certain amount of tension. I was seated at the back because I was on the punishment cells. So the punishment cells, and the category A's, we all sat together at the back. Well, Noel started the service and uh, everything was going sort of pretty well. I was enjoying the service. I was, I was invited to an army chaplain in, and I enjoyed his uh, testimony. I think he was, I think he was preaching from St Paul's Gospel, something like that, and he was calling them all sinners. Oh wow! And I thought, just, just get off, mate. You know, quick. Suddenly, uh, Paul Taylor got to his feet and ran from halfway up the chapel, down the steps, and rushed to the where the choir had their microphone, and grabbed it and and. Uh, began to harangue the audience. Prisoners had reached the end of their tether, but they'd had enough. But they, they weren't In willing God's to put God's place. Up and In God's home. In God's area, y'all decided to do this. I get it. You got to do what you got to do it, but gosh. No treatment by prison officers anymore. I distinctly remember an old proctor waving his arms about in front of the altar like, come on, lads, kill down. This is not the way to behave. He started pulling on the microphone lead to try and disconnect us. I pulled it so hard that I hit myself in the eye with it and gave myself a lovely black eye. I know, you're still bleeding from it on the top of your head. I saw an inmate put a balaclava on, take two chair legs out of his jeans. And I thought, oh, man. game on, here we go. And then he just said, right, lads, we've heard enough. And the whole place just... Turned up. started going mad. Everything that could have got damaged was getting damaged. Everything was in a pile, in the middle, kind of thing. Like a bonfire. It was payback time. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but, you know, you kick a dog down, eventually gonna bite your back, and that's exactly what they were doing. All we could do was hand it over to God and say, Lord, you, you're in charge here. You sort this out. I remember pulling... Oh, that's the priest? God, forgive me, Lord, for talking about his bleeding head. One colleague out by his trousers, and he said, they've got my keys. And I said, forget your keys, mate. Let's just get out. And I said, I'll have those keys. And we opened the back of the chapel doors, and we flooded out onto the landings, and prison officers weren't up for the fight. No. They just ret retreated. Of course, they went back to the pub and got another In drink. In strange ways, all cells were opened by- All that tough shit was out the window. a single set of keys. Paul oh, Taylor had now had access to the whole prison. I opened up all the prisoners who were still locked up in their cells, saying exercise, you know, slap out. My intention now was go to the rotunda where there was construction going on with the scaffolding from the ground floor up into the top of the roof, which was 80 feet. And my intention was to get on the roof. Oh, man. So I managed to scale across to the end. And uh, eventually, when I got to the end, I stood up. And don't forget, at this time, there was a documentary documenting all of this. So this is all on film. They picked the perfect time. It was like, wow, look at this. Or they had just done a documentary. Look how either, fast it either is. way, it's cam televised camera. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place, Manchester. I was so happy to see the Arndale, the CIS building. This was like me now being released. I thought, I'm on the roof here. I feel safe. 
I happened to see the bell. So instinctively, I went, I'm getting the bell down. <laughs> so I smashed hell out of it, put a load of dints in it. And when I've had me fun with that bell, I threw it off the roof, so there's your bell back. <laughs> you can see him throwing and I it. I remember shouting down, who's got your prison now? I've got your prison. News is coming in of a major disturbance. Crazy, man. The most savage prison person. The most savage person in there took that bitch over, climbed to the ceiling, got through, strong bodybuilder, punched through the wall, the roof, grabbed the bell, dented it up, threw it off the roof, said, I got your bell. Like, what is this? King Kong? That's tough. Not King Kong. Um, Donkey Kong. When he goes up, throws the bear. That's, that's a terrible comparison. It's a strange bro. ways jail in Manchester. Inmates are believed to have stormed the prison chapel and they're now said to be rampaging through the jail. Within a matter of minutes. How could all of that, like, they're short staffed. Somebody that works the prison doesn't normally work it. 300 people. Y'all didn't think about that? Like, damn, there's 300 people here. It's normally like 150. What the hell is going on? Minutes of the prisoners reaching the roof. The riot had become a national event. Yeah, turned up. I rushed up to the gate and discovered I couldn't get in because of these hails of slates that were coming off the roof. They were throwing tiles, just like frisbees. They were throwing them at stuff. That's free work. Now you don't got to get the roof taken off. That's half the job done. You just got to get it redone to, you know. Uh, we're throwing them all over the place. Remodeling anyway, right? They was trying to injure shit. There was a few stuff. We're quiet. I could have swore they said peaceful protest. This is not peaceful from the jump. There was no peace ever tied to this, right? Badly injured. <laughs> Number one stuff. All negativity. Piece of slate through his jaw. Damn. There was chaos going on because prisoners were just frantically letting off steam. Oh, they man. were pushing coping stones off Ooh. the top onto the control centre. So it what is that? What is that? All in HD. This ain't HD. This is like 240p. Oh. oh. But the cameras couldn't see what was happening inside the prison. Housed on E and C wings were okay. inmates charged or convicted of sex offenses. Oh. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. What the. How are there, um. Rioters ripped doors off their hinges to get to the men. Yeah, victim number one. People saying these are nonsense, these are sex offenders, you know what I mean? And, and they, they, were, they were just beating them. And they'd have them in like, there was a cupboard that was like a freezer. Uh, and they'd have them in there and they'd have them locked in there and they were bringing them out one at a time. I'd seen a few of them hit with iron bars. It was just like a wild pack doing things and people were just joining in. I want to locate a particular prisoner who'd come in that week for attacking a six-year-old girl, attempted rape of a six-year-old. Now, YouTube, I don't condone any of this, but hey. Year old girl, and we went up onto that landing and we found the cell that he was in. And we entered that cell and I did punch him twice. And prisoners set about him with sticks. And he was dragged from the cell and his face was pushed into the railings and then he was picked up and thrown over the railings Damn. and grabbed hold of the railings um, so intensely that it required, you know, hitting his fingers with, with, with a stick for him to be let go. Tables, chairs, everything went over. I don't condone him. it, but listen, listen. You were all enjoying it and getting off on it. And you chose your path. No one felt bad about that at all. Badly injured and fearing for their lives, prisoners dragged themselves to safety. And this inmate was actually thrown out uh, at the end of A-Wing uh, onto the stone steps. 
he'd been beaten up in such a way, maybe his private parts or whatever. I don't, he was in such a state. Yikes. Uh, there's blood all over the place. When that prisoner was lying on the floor in the state he was, he was still being bombarded by other inmates off the roof. By that afternoon, worried relatives joined bystanders flocking to Strangeways, desperate to get messages into the prison. I want him to get out of that prison. I want him to get out because there's going to be a load of killing. I can feel it in my bones. Listen, Jeffrey. Whatever's going on in there, don't oh, have no. I can feel it in my bones. Listen, Jeffrey. Of course, they were the same name as me. That's crazy. You ain't got to warn me, shorty. I got this. I got this. I'm holding on. Yeah, I got a pink sweater on, but I'm holding mine. Whatever's going on in there don't have nothing to do with it at all. You just get yourself to the nearest door and get yourself out of there, laddie. It's impossible. You don't know what you're talking about. By the end of the day, 1,000 men had fled the riot and surrendered. What's going on? As we started to see that the numbers inside were dropping, we thought it was time to explore whether we could get any of it back. I then met Brian Nicholson, who was taking control of the situation. Brian was immense in stature and immense in character. He's a Yorkshireman, and you could always tell a Yorkshireman, but you can't tell him much. <laughs> My assessment was it was very serious indeed, and it was going to be a very, very difficult, complicated job taking this prison back. That's something like Brian out of a Nicholson movie. Nicholson had witnessed this earlier so... riots at Hull and Ris This is crazy. This is like a movie scene. I feel like I watched this in a movie somewhere. They had to make a movie about this. The prisons. Oh. Well, I've made it to 30 minutes, so TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's get ready for part two. It's coming immediately. So, I'm done.